Now, for today's little adventure, I'm going to talk about some of the lorries that I drove back carrying the Moskvich and Lada and Wartburg and all the other cars down. Um, we started off, the first one was uh, a Thames Trader, a 1964 Thames Trader. And I wasn't working for the old man at the time. I suppose I was the obvious choice to drive it. So I got called back and we went off to the local commercial garage. At that time was um, Wincanton Garage. Helston um, and looked at the lorries that were suitable. I didn't have an HGV at the time when I started um, and they had two Thames traders there. One was a chassis cab uh, with no body on the back and the other one was um, an ex Falmouth Transport. Nice little lorry um, but everything on the back, sideboards, the whole shebang. That would have been about uh, eight years old at the time. They wanted £50 for the chassis cab and £200, or thereabouts, for the ex Falmouth transport lorry. So <laughs> he went down to the office and he decided to buy the cheaper one of the two, the £50 one. Um, Anyway, they gave me the keys and sent me up to bring this chassis cab down to drive it down. And when I got there, I found they'd given me the wrong keys. So I was walking back down to the office with the salesman. And my father was walking up. And he said, where are you going? And I said, well, they give me the wrong keys. I'm just taking them back. So he said... <laughs> He swore, I shan't, I shan't swear, but he said, get in the lorry and uh, drive it off and keep your mouth shut, which is what I did. So I got in this lorry and zoomed off and we never heard another word about that. Um, we paid £50 for a lorry that should have been £200 and we ran it for two years. Never heard a word from the firm again. Obviously the salesman. <laughs> covered it up or covered his mistake up now this was in uh, October time that I started going up and down the st at the beginning of winter really this whole lorry was ever so slow it would only do 44 miles an hour everywhere uphill down dale if you, I always said if you dropped it out of an aeroplane, you couldn't make 50 miles an hour with it. No, I was running, carrying cabbage, cauliflower, potatoes, what have you, to London markets. Um, and then I'd come back to Byfleet in Surrey and pick up. Uh, Moskvich cars in this old lorry and I'd done that uh, when the broccoli and cabbage was in season I'd done that nearly non-stop for two years I passed I took and passed my HGV so we could get a bigger lorry the first one was a, a TK Bedford with a Leyland 370 engine in it <laughs> powerful machine um, and this one had or we'd made um, ramps and what have you like a typical car transporter that went up over the cab yeah that went up over the cab so we could run we could carry more cars what with that and the trailer on the back um, I was carrying three cars at a time um, but that only lasted two or three trips before the engine blew up and he couldn't get another Leyland 370. So she was relegated to the scrapyard. The next <laughs> lorry that came along then was a Ford D800. Now compared to the Thames Trader, this was absolute, oh, this was heaven. Um, five speed gearbox, two speed axle. It had a heater in the cab, two speed windscreen wipers. Oh. It was just, and you could sleep across the seats. 
because it was um, uh, the gear lever would fall forward, which you couldn't do in the Trent Thames Trader because of the uh, the engine cover. Now that lorry had one major failing in that we couldn't keep the crank pulley tight on the engine and it would go for I don't know six eight trips maybe ten and the crank pulley would suddenly work loose and if you didn't catch it it would pump all the oil out of the engine so I was constantly watching my mirrors for oil coming out <laughs> behind me that and cars flashing at me because they were all covered in black engine oil um, so anyway that engine was done up so many times that it just wouldn't take it anymore so the next lorry on the scene then was a Comer TS3 a two-stroke Tillian Stevens engine um, JKX 145K that was the registration number It's only three years old and it belonged to um, Burley who make women's underwear so it never really done any serious work in its life uh, it had a container we took the container off it was reliable as the day is long it was brilliant on fuel and it had all these luxury items on it that I just <laughs> It had a Bostrom sprung seat that would bounce up and down going over bumps. Six speed gearbox, two speed axle, air brakes, um, nice heater. It even had a um, uh, twin fuel tanks that you could change over from a switch on the dashboard. That was a cracking lorry. The, <laughs> compared to the first one, which was the Thames Trader, on the Thames Trader, to break the monotony up, I bought an 8-track. I don't know if anyone remembers the 8-track, like a cassette player. And, um, but the lorry was positive earth. And <laughs> the, the cartridge player, the 8-track, was um, negative earth. But it was just lying in the middle and it was wrapped up in um, polystyrene and stuff too. But obviously it was a fire hazard because if one, one touched the other, the body was live on this thing. But and occasionally it would touch the gear lever and you'd get this almighty crackling through the speakers. That was on the Thames Trader. Anyway, so I carried on with this Comma 2 stroke. There was an absolute gem. Uh, and I went up and down. And it would, that would run along at like 55, 60 miles an hour. But by 77, the cars were all coming to an end. Um, the motorbikes, wasn't really worth sending a lorry up for a few motorbikes when a van would do the same. And I pretty much gave up lorry driving then. Um, then I <laughs> gave up working for Brookside once again. Um, my next adventure was um, to start up my own little workshop, going back to my native trade of repairing cars. And I ended up doing a lot of resprays. And I was quite successful at that. And one of the new customers I picked up was a firm called mariner coaches and i used to do the bodywork where a driver did something i would come and straighten it out for them hang on gotta mind these brambles here and i sort of did that overnight so that the coaches and buses weren't out of service during the day the the I'd become quite good friends with the, with the boss of it. And he said to me, would you like to take 
your PSV, your coach driving test, dri driving license test. So I said, oh yeah, I'll go for that. So he said, drive a school bus for a week and then at the end of the week, go and take your driving test, which is what I did. I booked in, when we knew which week it was, I drove a school bus with no license all week. Took my driving test on the Friday and luckily passed. Um, <laughs> and then the, the first weekend he gave me a couple of jobs to do of an evening. And I earned £56 in two evenings doing this coach driving. I just couldn't believe the amount of money I was making. I mean, I was only getting about 150 quid for respraying a car. It would take me all week to do. And just for driving a, a coach for basically only a couple of hours and sitting around for four or five hours, um, I was getting £56 in two evenings. So I was doing more and more and more of this. <laughs> 